was in Second Timothy two, Second Timothy two, uh, verse seventeen. Some Jews may have tried to explain the empty grave. This may have tested a person's belief in the resurrection of Jesus at all. And it says Paul dealt with these beliefs. He wrote about the facts about the resurrection in verses 1 through 11. And then he gave the serious results if people deny the resurrection in verses 12 through 19. He then shows the results if people believe in the resurrection of Jesus. He shows the results for the future and in the presence in verses 20 through uh, 34. Um, so there you go. That um, pretty much tells us exactly what... It says right here, Paul gives seven results if people deny resurrection. Number one, in verse 13 and 16, God has not raised Christ. Death and hate will have defeated life and love. Number two, in verse 14, those who preach the resurrection are wasting their time. Number three, in verse 14, he says, those who have trusted in Christ will be disappointed. He has said he was the truth. What he said would have all been a lie. Number four, in verse 15, some people have preached that God raised Jesus. Those people are giving false ideas about God. They are breaking the law. Number five, in verse 17, God will punish Christians for their sins. God has not forgiven them. And number six, in verse 18, those who have died are as believed in Christ have no future. And number seven, in verse 19, the last one says, if Jesus has not risen from death, his promises about the future make no sense at all. So have no hope for the future. Those are the seven results <clears throat> if people deny the resurrection. Isn't, isn't it funny that everything is in sevens with God? Everything. Literally everything. Um, does that help at all? I mean, what verse did you just ask me about on this right here in Corinthians? I love Corinthians because I absolutely love Paul. He was my favorite person in the entire Bible. Except, of course, for Jesus. Are y'all there? Guys? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. It's 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 and 24. It says, future results of the resurrection. Verse 20. Paul used a word that described the first grain of the harvest. In first. Jews had to offer this first to the priest in the temple before the grain went into shops. It was a sign of the future harvest. So the resurrection of Jesus was the sign of the future. Okay. okay. So the harvest, the harvest, do they go pick every once in a while or do they? All right. It says right here, it was a sign of the first future harvest. Um, where does it say, okay, let me see. Let me go back to 24. Then the end will come. Christ will just, okay, no, wait, no, wait. But Christ really has come back from death. He is the first person to rise of all those who have fallen asleep. Death came before of what a man did. Resurrection from the dead also comes from what a man did. Because of Adam, we all die. Where does it say harvest in the Bible? Um, let's see, 24, the end will come, cross will the rule, and the kingdom is going to heaven. I don't see the word harvest in the, in the actual scripture. Is it there? I, I just heard you say it. Oh. oh yeah, I was reading it. It says right here, first, the word first, Paul used a word that described the first grain of the harvest. And I believe what he's saying there is, um, Har Jesus. Harvest meaning when he comes back to harvest his crops, us. Yeah. Right. Um, and it says right here, um, those who have fallen asleep means those who have died. Jesus himself used the word sleep to mean death when he woke Lazarus from what he called sleep. Sleep describes a state that will not last forever in John 11. Um, Amen. Boy, I'm really shouting out these answers to you guys. You guys have got me hopping. I think I'm giving you pretty good answers, don't you think? Y'all are tough. Y'all are as tough in this as you are in real life. Well, see, it's not me that's giving you the truth. It's 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 God. Well, giving everybody the truth. Yeah, I mean it's it's there in black and white and red. 
I love what I'm reading from. It is absolutely fabulous. It's a thing that Victor got me for Christmas and it is unbelievable. It, uh, it's a, it's a, uh, an application that's on my computer that is just fabulous. Um, it says right here that verses 21 through 22 say, um, Death came because of what a man did. Resurrection from the dead also comes from what a man did. Because of Adam, we all die. So because of Christ, God will make everyone alive. But each will be in turn. Christ, the first of those who rise from the dead, and when Christ comes back, God will raise Christ's spiritual brothers and sisters. And it says down here, Adam's failure to obey God brought sin into the world. Sin was responsible for death. As people, we all have the same tendency to sin. Everyone has sinned. Therefore, we will all die. No one can avoid death. But Christ is the new Adam. He came into the world as a real person. He came into the world to rescue us from sin and its results. Christ gives life life we can choose to share in his life if we belong to him we are part of his completely new human family we have god's gift of eternal life and this life begins on earth it continues beyond physical death our spirit will live with god this is good news people this is good news um <clears throat> Alpha dog, are you there? Somebody's got to have some questions. Or anything. Or whatever y'all want to do. Go to Psalm 146, verse 3 and 4. Because you like Psalm, right? Yes, I do. Psalm, okay, let me get over there first, and then I'll tell you to repeat it. Do, 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 do. P, S, A, L, M. And what was the uh, S in Psalm what? 146, verse 3 and 4. 146. All right. This will twist both our heads. (laughs) It says, Do not trust in princes and mortal man in whom there is no salvation. His spirit departs. He returns to earth in the very day his thoughts perish. Mm Mm-hmm. So his thoughts perish. Your, Your thoughts die when you die. Okay, and well, then let's the, where it says his spirit departs, okay, it says, so that, that kind of confuses both of us, right? No, because your spirit does depart from your physical body. But what is a spirit? A spirit is the, is the inner, is, is us, yes. All right, look what, look what Jesus said. Stand by just one second, I have a thing in real life, yes. Can you do a mute? Yeah, I'll have to mute, talk amongst yourselves, hang on please. So how you doing, Alpha Dog? What do you think? No, I I see what you're saying. I'm 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 with you. I think your your spirit's kind of like your uh, your you I, know your, con- your conscience, everything that you know your heart's about. So when you when you die, that's dead until Christ comes back, and you're you know. Yeah. When you, if you want to see a spirit, I'm a I'm a spirit. Just look in my eyes. I'm a spirit. You know what I mean? You are a spirit. Debbie's yeah. a spirit. Yeah, we just all have different flesh, like they were saying. Yeah. And it, it's corrupted flesh. So he needs to plant us in the ground and raise us in uncorrupted flesh. I'm back, babies. Okay, we were talking about how it's... When we die... Our conscience dies. Our our thoughts perish. I don't believe that. I, I really don't believe that. Because I believe what you're listening to right now is some spirit who we call we call Debbie. Okay, but it's it's a spirit. It's it's one it's it's one of it's one of his children. It's that's what you're talking to. I mean, I'm in this earth suit made out of skin and stuff, but still Yeah, you, you, you are a spirit. Right. That's that's mm-hmm, exactly. And if you look up the words what soul and spirit meant in Greek or it means living, breathing creature. And it's, I, think we, I think we have to die due to the fact that, you know, if it was just a dream, you sin in your dreams. 
So we would have to be totally dead for him to raise us from the new seed that we were able to choose and, you know, rid ourselves of sin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, now, I think, like you said, the, the dream part, you know, like when you wake up, or you follow, I think it will be like that when, when the Lord comes back. But okay. I know some people think, you know, well, I see my grandmother's ghost or something, too. So, you know, I've, but I don't really believe in that. Well, um, in First Kings, verse 8, it says, um, hold on just a second. I'm going to get that. I like the whole chapter. I don't like just one verse. It says, then King Solomon summoned all to his presence at Jerusalem and the elders of Israel, all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the Israelite families to bring up the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. From the city of David, all the Israelites came together to King Solomon at the time of the festival in the month of Ethanim, the, the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the Ark and they brought up the Ark of the Lord to the tent of meeting and of the sacrificed and the sacred furnishings. The priests and Levites carried them up. And King Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing sheep and cattle so that they could not be recorded or counted. Okay. The priest then brought the ark of the Lord's covenant to its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place on earth, and put it beneath the wings of of the cher cherubim the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark and overshadowed the ark and its carrying poles these poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary but not from outside the holy place they are still there today there was nothing in the ark except two stone tablets that moses had placed in it at horob where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. When the priests withdrew from the holy place, a cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priests could not perform their services because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled his temple. Then Solomon said, The Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have indeed built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. While the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them and said, Praise be to the Lord God of Israel, who with his own hand has fulfilled what he promised with his own mouth to my father David. For he said, Since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have built a temple. So I built it that my name might be there, but I have chosen David to rule my people in Israel. My father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, You did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build my temple." The Lord has kept my promise he made. I have succeeded David, my father, and now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised, and I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. I have provided a place there for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with our ancestors when he brought them out of Egypt. Okay, then it says this. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel, spread out his hands toward heaven and said, Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants who continue wholeheartedly in your way. You have kept your promise to your servant, David, my father. With your mouth you have promised and with your hand you have fulfilled it as today. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep your servant David, my father, the promises you made to him when you said that you shall never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your descendants are careful in all they do to walk before me faithfully as you have done. And now, God of Israel, 
let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. But All right, see where he said he'd sit on the throne of Israel? Mm -hmm. That God will sit on the throne? He said God will sit on the throne? I believe so.